Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Monday, February 26th, 2018, episode 33. You give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn, which is really hard right now with all the all the craziness that's uh, going on with the whole uh, my guns thing. So we'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, action, and yes, maybe a little lols. Although today's daily lols might be a little scary. I think it's kind of funny, but it could be a little scary. If you're watching on YouTube, you miss the opening of the show and you'll also miss the very end which you can only hear if you watch live on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon. The image of the profile matches the image on this show. And if you're watching live on Facebook, don't forget to stay tuned because I will respond to the comments after the YouTube part of the show is over. And if you're watching on YouTube, join me on Facebook so next time you don't miss the full show. Today's show title is IRS Assault on Crypto is good for true crypto. And you can get show notes at isheadlines.com or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video or go to istate.tv uh, slash h033 and you can also find our audio podcast show on iTunes and Stitcher as well. And on today's episode of Headlines You May Have Missed, Coinbase Goes Fetal, Meet the Babcock Ranch Genome Blockchain, HR from AI, and more. And what you won't find on this show, you're not going to find any headlines related to the whole Florida shooting and uh, the never again hashtags and all that. Not going to find that on this episode of Headlines You May Have Missed. And now, ladies and gentlemen, brace yourselves for here are your 20 minutes of headlines you may have missed. Coinbase rolls over for IRS but here's why the market response is good news. So, as many of you may be aware, Coinbase has announced that it will be turning over the data of over 13,000 of its users to the IRS. The cryptocurrency market then immediately took a bit of a nosedive. I know, uh, let me just check here on the, on the fly here. Bitcoin was down to... I think 9,500. Let's see, where is it at right now? Where is the Bitcoins at right now? Well, it's, it's already starting to rebound. It's at 10,135, but it is down from its last week's high of 12,000. So there is a little hidden good news here, however. And that good news is this. Many of the people investing in, participating in the cryptocurrency market, they appear to be motivated, I believe, this is just Paul's theory here, by the prospect of hiding their assets. Assets, you gotta, you really gotta make sure you say that full word when you start it. When you commit to the word, finish the word. Otherwise, things can go wrong real quick. So, motivated by the prospect of hiding their assets from the prying, pilfering hands of the coercive enterprise. News that one of the major cryptocurrency exchanges is simply rolling over for the IRS has influenced a number of folks to back out of the cryptocurrency market. And uh, I, I wrote this a couple of hours ago, and I, it already, I'm, I'm betting that they'll come back. Uh, but, but I am also betting that uh, may, maybe not short term, but midterm, long term, I'm betting that maybe maybe they won't be coming back so much to the open and easily traceable coins like Bitcoin. And maybe now is the time for the rise of the truly, truly private crypto coins, which goes to my, basically my theory is the more pressure the government puts to try to monitor cryptocurrency, the more the private, uh, 
I, I, you know, you, you, you call it the black market, you call it the dark web, I call it the liberty market and the liberty web. The more the liberty market and the more the liberty web will rise, it will hasten the arrival of individuals who aren't even thinking about, you know, do I like the course of enterprise model? Do I think of uh, uh, that a free association model would be better? They're not thinking anything like that. They're thinking, hey, how, how do I keep more of my stuff? And in the process of how do I keep more of my stuff, they're going to end up using technology, tools, free associations that are going to kind of nudge them towards seeing, hey, hey, maybe there's a different way for humans to quote, govern, unquote, themselves, and it need not be a coercive enterprise model. At least that's my hope, and I believe that's what's going to happen. Not not sure, but I do believe that, well, that's what will happen. This next story I love. <laughs> Intentional Florida community aims to go off-grid. And this is the Babcock Ranch, and you can see a picture there from their website. Woodley, if you're watching, if you're listening to the audio, you're you're not you're not seeing the picture. That'd be weird if you were. That'd be really weird. Woodley Hall Information Center uh, from the Brad Babcock Ranch. So Babcock Ranch in Florida is attempting to build a community that is completely off the grid, and. This is more than a dream, and if you're watching as opposed to listening, you can see the building that's like, that's more than a dream. It's being built. Uh, and it, it was actually begun by a former NFL lineman named Sid Kitson. I've never heard of him, so I don't know how big a player he was, metaphorically or otherwise. <laughs> Every once in a while, you'll see me strongly recommend that you click through and read the full article that I'm exerting from, and definitely, I, I, I please go to the show notes and go to the article on ArsTechnica.com. It's listed in this article. You can find it. I really encourage you to read the full article, which we're just going to highlight. So the uh, re regardless of the motivation behind the creation of Babcock Ranch, What's going on there is absolutely a case study in self-sufficiency and self-sustainability at the individual and free association level. It's, it's also a study in how does a free association, self-sustaining community navigate through the reality of power around it as it deals with coercive enterprise governance that will that will get in the way. Uh, I mean, a case in point here, uh, he, he wanted to turn, this is from Ars Technica, and I'll just highlight this part. Kitson wanted to turn the abandoned land he saw around him in southwest Florida into a sort of future town, a place running entirely on the latest and greatest in energy efficient technology. So in 2006, Kitson purchased 91,000 of acres of mostly undeveloped agricultural land, just 15 miles northeast of Fort Myers, he named the development Babcock Ranch. Developed by, and then it, uh, uh, get, get, get to a, another part of the story here, developed by French transportation company Transdev, the pay system that they're designing for this, the for uh, which is short for personalized autonomous connected electric, starts the bus off at a cautious crawl and never exceeds 10 miles per hour as it buries us around town. This is the writer writing, not me. I'd love to, I definitely want to go visit this place. A transdev operator joins us on the ride, hovering over a control panel and monitoring the navigation system for any sign that it's lost the GPS signal. And uh, it says, we're, we're designing the town around stuff like this. We don't want cars around or parking around. So that's just, that's just their approach. That's fine. But l l let's get to the part where they're, they're having a little bit of a problem here. But desiring self-sufficiency and building the infrastructure needed to make make it happen are two very different things, especially in Florida, where laws let you, utility companies keep homeowners tethered to the grid. And that's part of the problem that they're having. They want to be completely untethered, and Florida laws are preventing them from being currently untethered, at least right now. So I, I definitely encourage you to go, go and read the full article. It's a fascinating study, and once I've, I'd, I'd never heard about it till today, and now it's on my radar. Now I'm going to be tracking and seeing 
the developments as they 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 continue to attempt to build this off-grid community. Get to know yourself, that is, your genomes, thanks to the blockchain. If you really want to get to know the full information about your genomes, well, you just might need the blockchain to do it. A tech startup called Nebula is working on using a blockchain to process the information contained in genomes. Now, you, you can not only get your genome sequence, which you, you can already do, you can know just about exactly what it means. And okay, maybe not exactly. I don't know if I believe in exactly, but just say theoretically. You can get pretty close to it. You can know uh, just about exactly what it means and what you can do to avoid DNA time bombs built into your DNA. And thanks to the secure environment of the blockchain, your information can be protected from prize, prying eyes. So this is uh, article is from Wired here. And they say here, early February brought the announcement of Nebula, a company co-founded by the imperial uh, maker of genomics, George Church. He, his expertise is collecting and understanding genomes, the blockchain stuff, as he hilariously acknowledged in a Q&A with the journal Science, is somebody else's problem. When you have the blockchain, you have a trustless mechanism in place where people know they can verify who's accessing their data, said Dennis Grishin, author, uh, uh, another Nebula co-founder. In other words, a blockchain brings security and trust without centralization. You don't need to trust or verify a third-party central authority to take a cut. The Nebula team expects that people will get their whole genome sequenced by Nebula's machines or others. Research groups that might want to use any individual's data can pay those individuals. So, so instead of paying Nebula, now Nebula will get a cut, but still, you'll have to pay me. You'll have to, if you want my gen genomal, genomic, how do you say that, information, you're going to have to pay me and Nebula would, would get a cut as well. So, so there you have it. The blockchain will help you, really. You, if, you, if, you, if you value self-awareness, <laughs> this takes it to a whole other level. Your HR rep is an AI robot. Deal with it. So this... Ladies and gentlemen, no, this is not your moment Ten of lulls, minutes. although it could be. I, I didn't make this your moment of lulls, so it's kind of lulzy. It seems innocuous enough right now, but in time, could the move into the HR department by artificial intelligence go beyond basic questions and new employee orientation? So there's a new tech startup, it's called Spoke, and it enables companies to use a narrowly focused AI program to help orient new employees without taking up the time of HR personnel. And as I, as I so deftly write, who knows though, if someday the HR person might be an AI robot like Sophia. Let me break it down into pop culture terminology that I would understand a little bit better. I'm watching I'm I'm I've been binge watching The Office with my daughter who's never seen The Office. So now we're starting from the beginning and watching The Office. So it's top of the mind awareness for me. So that's why I wrote this. In other words, Toby of the show The Office would be replaced by Sophia, the Saudi citizen robot. And I, do, I think Michael would still hate her or him him her whatever i don't want to assume sophia's gender i for one by the way i just want to document this i for one welcome my robot overlords again just just in case can't hurt i mean i don't think humans are gonna like try to take me down because i said that but if i don't say that and the robot overlords win yeah i for one welcome my robot overlords <laughs> California's gun confiscation unit struggles to meet, quote, orders, unquote. While I am not at all saying that massive-scale gun confiscation will be happening anytime soon, small-scale targeted gun confiscation is already here, 
at least in California and other places, but we're, we're, we're talking about California for this story. A special task force has been created to target and seize guns from people that have, quote, lost, unquote, their Second Amendment, quote, privileges, unquote, for, for one reason or another. But even, but even at this small of a scale, the task force is struggling to keep up with the demand. And this story is from the Washington Post, which, of course, they wrote it in a very matter-of-fact kind of, uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong here kind of way. So that tells you what you need to know about the Washington Post. You can get information out of it, but uh, remember the perspective. Very very pro-state perspective coming from the Washington Post. A dozen years ago, the state set up a database that flags law enforcement officials when a registered gun owner is convicted of a felony, deemed mentally ill, has received a straining rear order, or committed one of about 37 qualifying misdemeanors. The list is known as the Armed Prohibition Person System, and while it has failed to prevent mass shootings in San Bernardino, Isla Vista, and other cities in the state, it has taken tens of thousands of guns all to the hands of people prohibited from having them prohibited by the state and by the state definitions. Not that some of them, maybe if you knew them, you'd think, well, I'm, I, it's not bad that they don't have a gun, but empowering the state to determine that. Yeah, that part, that's where my problem starts. State officials say the kind of restraining order that a family or law enforcement official is allowed to seek here against someone of concern might have landed Nicholas Cruz, the alleged sh uh, school shooter in Parkland, on the list if one existed in Florida. That will never be known. I think there were plenty of other regulations, whatever, that could have and should have prevented Nicholas Cruz from continuing to possess firearms. But that's another story. Hey, I didn't realize. They, they, okay, I said, I, I didn't realize, I forgot. They, they, they snuck a reference to that whole thing in there. I apologize for that. So moving on. The work of Richardson's agents is overwhelming with the number of guns and prohibited. And that's in quote, and that's their word. P-R-O-H-I-B-I-T-E-D-S, prohibited, growing faster than the under-resourced teams can take them off the streets. So is the ingenuity of those selling guns and those making guns and those owning guns, legally or not. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's kind of the reality of the world there, buddy. Turk Reich faces potential of U.S. sanctions over Russia missile air defense purchase. While Turkey Five claims minutes. it will not receive sanctions from the U.S. over its efforts to purchase Russia's S-400 air defense missile system, American representatives are sending a decidedly different signal. Uh, uh, and this is from Al Aval News. I don't know how you pronounce that. A-V-H-A-L. Aval, Aval. Turkey will not face direct sanctions from the United States in relation to its purchase of a Russian air defense system. Turkish Deputy Minister Fikri Izik was quoted as saying in an editorial published in Turkey's Daily Sabah newspaper on Monday. Turkey signed a deal to buy S-400 missiles from Russia in December. The United States has called on Turkey to reconsider its decision to purchase the system, while a bill signed by U.S. President Donald Trump in late January allows the United States to sanction and cut off arms sales to countries that do business with banned Russian firms, which include those involved in producing the S-400 system. So we'll, I guess we'll find out over the coming weeks, months, whatever, however long it takes the United States to decide these things, whether the the, the Turk Reich will face sanctions or not. Combining molecular self-assembly with 3D printing produces better drugs. I love writing that title. Some titles you just really love writing. I really love writing that title. The drugs that we're talking about, by the way, folks, are like cancer-fighting drugs. So, so all you stoners out there, man, I'm not talking to you. Uh, or, or the caffeine addicts such as myself. Researchers at Queen Mary University in London are working on a way to combine self-assembling molecules with 3D printing or additive manufacturing to enable them to more effectively design tissues as well as to test the effects of therapeutic drugs. And this is from theengineer.co.uk. 
bioprinting techniques gives an a gives additive advantage to tissue engineering. Researchers have developed a bioprinting technique that combines molecular self-assembly with additive manufacturing and advance with potential benefits for tissue engineering and drug test. Uh, drug testing. Led by Queen Mary University of London, the researchers have created structures embedded in an ink which they said is similar to their native environments and opens the possibility of making them behave as they would in the body so they can figure out what works and what doesn't work before they put it in your body. Will self-driving cars become car bombs? This, ladies and gentlemen, this is your moment of lulls. Although some of you might be a little feared, some of you may find it amusing as I do. Autonomous vehicles such as self-driving cars minutes. could become weapons in the hands of hackers, says a report called The Malicious Use of Artificial Intelligence. What this means is that your self-driving car could theoretically drive you off the cliff because your ex-husband is now controlling the car from a laptop 300 miles away. Didn't think of that now, did you? <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing at that. It's a scary thought, but it's it's kind of funny. Uh, it'll be interesting to see the, 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 the counter technology that emerges or the counter defensive technology that, in, that emerges in response to that threat so this is from cnbc malicious use of ai could turn self-driving cars and drones into weapons top researchers warn with advances in our artificial intelligence the risk of hackers using sex technologies to launch malicious attacks are increasing top researchers warn in a report released on wednesday that report is called the malicious use of one artificial minute. intelligence Ooh, i only have a minute left i gotta hurry up chinese fishing boats fired on by Argentinian Coast Guard. Things got a little testy off the coast of Argentina when Chinese ships allegedly entered Argentinian waters to attempt to do something fishy. Fishing. The Argentinians opened fire on the boats not to hit them but to alter their navigation in an attempt to detain them. And there's a little video embed here included in the post in the article there 30 that, seconds. that you can click on. Our last story, Bitcoin miner gets warning from FCC over signal interference. A Bitcoin miner from Brooklyn received a warning from the FCC that he better change how he's doing things because his work was interfering with T-Mobile's LTE network and the Ten story seconds. Uh, in a first, the Federal Communication Commission has ordered the shutdown of a Bitcoin mining device, which was causing interference in the 700 megahertz LTE network for T-Mobile. And there, I had to stop. As you can, I mean, you, you guys heard the beep, the, the bip, 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 the bip, bip, bip. So you know when you hear the bip, 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 you know what that means. That means homie, homie Paul has got to shut it down. And that's it. That's that's where the headlines end. That's that's your 20 minutes. That's all you get. So if you'd like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for February 26, 2018. Or you can check out the link to the show notes page, which is in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video. Or... Go to iState.tv slash HO33. And lastly, you can also find our audio podcast show on iTunes and Snitch Stitcher by searching for iState. And I do want to note the audio version includes nothing but the headline. So that means this part you're hearing now or watching now, this isn't in the 20 minutes. The part you heard in the beginning of the show, that's not in the 20 minutes. The audio is just the 20 minutes. That's the no muss, no fuss version of the show. No promotions, no nothing, just 20 minutes of headlines. Uh, so don't forget me. So join me, by the way, tonight on Is Daily Monday. See, this would be a promotion right now. This is the part that you don't hear on the audio version. Don't forget to join me tonight on Is Daily Monday with Professor Rambo at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. Tonight's show is called Why Does the FBI Hate Police? Yeah, we're going to be talking about ammunition in a really detailed way. As always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. So until tomorrow 
at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying, have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters.